today what I want to do is I want to show you how you would use the trap triggers in the Zachary Fowler signature survival card. What I want to do is set up a snare on this rabbit trail. You can see that multiple rabbits have went through here. So it's a great spot to set up a snare. Increases your chances and they usually use the same trail often. They do make new trails and such. But this one here has been used often. You can see that it has melted tracks so it was not used in the last few hours. But it's a good chance that they may come through here anytime soon. So I have placed the Zachary card in my wallet. And I thought it was a great addition to my wallet kit because what these are made for, this one here, is great for filling my belly. It gives me options that I could use to possibly put some food in my belly. That's what this is for. These survival cards, they are what they are. This one here, hooks, trap triggers, small knife, fishing spear. I could use that also for small game to pin them and so on. These here are going to help put food in your belly. That's what this card is designed around. Now what I'm going to use today are these little trap triggers right here. Right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push from the back side, get my fingernail under it and pop it out right like that and then snap it off. Now this retention system, all I have to do is take and put it right back in there and it's stuck. Now this is a sticky back. So just to keep these into place to help after you use them and such, I put them in this sleeve that I had and it's going to help keep everything from falling out if it does get old and such and if they wanted to. Well this way here slipping cards in and out of my wallet that's going to help keep those just that nice little sleeve. But this here is the trap trigger right there. Now you use two of these and what happens is when you use these I'm going to set this aside here for a second so I don't lose it. When you use these, it has a hook like this, and then you have another hook. You hook them in like this to set your trigger. When it pulls off, it springs your trap. What I'm going to do today is only use one. That allows me to have four trigger traps. I'm going to show you how to do that. So what I brought out was some monofilament 40 pound test fishing line. Now you can get some very strong braided lines and even monofilament that you can fit in that hole. Now you're not going to fit paracord through this but one strand of paracord if you separate it you can fit through here. But there's many different thing, uh, types of cordages and fishing lines that will fit. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to strip off probably about four feet off of this here. So what I'm going to do is just go like this. That's about right there. That's about four feet. And now I'll cut that off and then start putting this together and show you how it works. There's one piece of cordage. Now I can straighten this. I'm going to put the knife back first. Do not fool around with sharp blades in your hand. So I'm just going to stick it to that and push it back in. That's secure. Now to straighten this line, as you see, it's all bent and such. I'm just going to do this. And as you see, it straightens it 
pretty well. Right here, just gonna slip this in through the hole and tie it off. Just a couple overhand knots. There's one. And now I'll put another one in here. Put it nice and tight. And that's what we have right there. Got two more pieces here. One's going to be a snare and one's going to be an anchor line. But they've been coiled up on that piece of stick for quite a while, so they took the shape. So I have to try to straighten them some so they'll work. And that does help. I use this one here for my snare. The other one's going to be my anchor point. Now that I have that somewhat straight, what I'm going to do is put a bite in this. Because what I want to do is create a loop. I'm just going to kind of pinch that down so it's like this. I'm going to put an overhand knot, pretty much. I'm just going to spin that around like this and put it through. Right there. And now all I have to do is pull that tight. And that gives me my loop for my snare. Now, just have to stick this through that loop. And I have a snare. Now that I have my snare, I'm going to attach the snare and tie that onto the bottom of this trigger. Couple overhand again. Like that. Now this here, I can get out of my way. Just go down a little bit. Like this. And there we go. That's what we've got. This is the snare end. And this is going to go to a twitch pole. What I was always taught, never step on the trail. Always work around it. I see this here. We'll make a nice twitch bowl right there. So, I'm going to hook it up to that one. If you clean some of these branches off, it's going to work better. But, what I'm going to do now is by my two ends, this is my snare on this end. This here I'm just going to tie off. Going to come down and hook right here. So that should be good. Just going to tie it off. Nothing fancy. I've got extra line here, but that's okay by me. And there. Now, all I have to do is hook up my anchor point, and then I can set that up. So let's do that now. So what I'm going to do with my line is I'm just going to 
make basically a big loop. So I'm just going to tie this off, another overhand knot, and makes one big loop. Done. Now, what I have to do is wrap this around like this and put it through. That is going to create an anchor point. Bring down my trigger and hook that into that anchor point like that. Now, all I have to do is set up my snare. A lot of times with these type of snares, you have to use some aids to help you keep them open. I want this about fist size and about fist size up. So what I'm going to do is I'll put that like that. Put it here, just grab another stick. Of course, you got to be careful with this. Don't pull down and get that in your eye or something. Whip yourself. Almost. Fishing line's not the easiest to get set up. But, you work with what you got, right? This here being in that roll for all that time didn't help. Okay, we're going to do this different here. Okay, we'll put that there. There we go. That would work. You can see how this is set up now. And as soon as a rabbit gets caught in that, it's going to be start jumping around. So say you're coming through this way, pulls it off, and there you go. It sets it off. Easily set back down. Like that, and you can set it back up and so on. You can see how twisted that is and such. That's why it took me a little bit to set up the snare. But, use little sticks and such. They've used that for natural cordage and different cordages over time. The good thing about a snare trigger like that is when you use cordages like this and it's not steel wire, they can chew through this. If you have a twitch pole, it keeps pressure on the snare, thus helping with not being able to break as easy, the cordage. Also, you can't get around there to chew it off. So that's why they use the twitch pole. And if you set it up to a heavy twitch pole, you can actually snap an animal, go, you know, snap it right up and go up into the air, holding it up off its feet or right into the air so other predators and such can't get it. Many, many different ways you can do it. But, to be honest, that is a pretty cool little piece of kit. I mean, it took me more time to straighten the wire, really. Um, <laughs> you just tie one to your twitch pole, and one to the snare, and then you use your anchor point. Very simple. But, I have four of them on a card, and if I do not have a cutting tool, that I can process a seven notch, two sticks. This here would be very handy, but I could use these, and then still, if I wanted more, I could go out and make seven notch sticks and such, and they'll work in the same manner. But, pretty cool addition to a survival card, in my opinion. So I've taken all the line off of there, and now what I can do is just place this right in back of this card, 
right back in its place like that. Now I can reuse that another time. I have a video where I use two seven notch sticks for a fishing trap that when they pull on the line it sets it off and has a twitch pole as well set in the hook. These can be used in the same way. Same way I set it up there, all you have to do is run that out and into water with a hook on it. When a fish bites, it pulls it off, twitches up, and sets the hook. Now I'm going to try one other thing right now. I can't try out the hooks because it's not fishing season for trout around here, and that's what I'll be using them for, you know, in the future. But what I want to do is just see how the lures work. And I believe that stream right over here has some open spots. I'm going to check that out. <laughs> I thought it may be open, but it's not. I'm going to walk down it, see if I can find an open spot possibly. Not looking good. May have to wait for another day. So I've been breaking trail through a lot of brush and such, trying to see if I can find an open spot. It's not open yet, but there's one other spot I'm going to try. It may be open, and we may be able to get some footage of that. But right now, whew, I'm rather tired and just going to slowly punch my way through all this brush. Got the haversack with me just to carry my camera gear and I have my little survival kit in my wallet plus the Fowler card. That's what I come out here with. Normally I come out with a lot more but to do this video I wanted to go very minimal. So this here was the only other spot that I could think of that may be open because that's a set of falls. I was hoping there would be a pool open, but there isn't. So I was rather curious on how those lures would work. Wanted to see how the action was and such, but looks like I'm going to have to wait on that video. Great snowshoe, that's for sure. And I got a workout. I want to thank you for watching. I just want to share some of the ideas that is around this card. This card is good for helping you fill your belly. That's what it's good for. The knife, multiple use, cut and cordage and so on. It's a small blade though, so it's going to limit what you're going to do with it. But these here are just added pieces of gear you can throw in a wallet that if you was out on a day hike and such with friends and you did not have a kit, I always carry a kit, but some folks don't. This here is good for something like that. Me, I've got it in my wallet and that's where it's going to stay because I see a lot of use that possibly could come up and this card could help. I want to thank you for watching. Take care. All the best.